Good morning, site planners. So today we're gonna to be taking a look at recharge, recharge basins. And before we get into all the <clears throat> calculations for it, we have to do a little discussion on what is a recharge basin? What do they look like? What's their purpose? Where do you find them? Things like that. So recharge basins are basically large holes in the ground that we use to collect stormwater runoff and then we slowly allow it to uh, drip back into the ground and that becomes our groundwater. It recharges the aquifer, it recharges the groundwater table. Uh, this is a little bit different than leaching pool design in the sense that leaching pool design, uh, you put your leaching pools where the water is being collected. So if you find a low point on a site, you pop your leaching pool in that location, water drains into the ground directly there. With a recharge basin, we're gonna use a series of pipes that are set, you know, could be uh, you know quarter mile or more away and we're gonna let that water flow through the pipe network to get into the recharge basin. So recharge basins generally collect water from a much larger area. General rule of thumb is about five acres or, or more. Uh, recharge basins are, are more uh, useful to you. Five acres or less, leaching pools seem to be more cost effective. But you'll see some other stuff in the PowerPoint you can uh, read through about those. So let's look at this diagram or this uh, photo of a uh, subdivision. So first of all, let's identify where the recharge basin is. The recharge basin uh, is right here. And one of the things I want to just first mention to you is recharge basins do not have to be rectangular. It's most common that they are that way, but you can size up a recharge basin to really fit any leftover piece of property uh, that you have. The volume of water that goes into your recharge basin is all done through Q equals CIA. We take a runoff coefficient for the entire area. We multiply that by the square footage of the site times a certain intensity of rain, and that gives you a certain amount, a certain volume of water. We're looking at volumes of water in the 500,000 to 1 million plus cubic feet. So it's a gigantic volume of water that you're storing. Okay, so how do we get the water into those recharge basins? Well, the, that stuff you're not gonna see. All that stuff is below ground. And that's something that a lot of civil engineers we, we complain about is that our best work gets hidden below ground. No one gets to see the cool stuff, but you're gonna see where we get it from. So somewhere in this neighborhood, there's gonna be a right of way, basically an area of property where, let me figure out where that might be. I think it's right here. It's an area of property where there will be a series of pipes that will take the water into that recharge basin. It's all below ground. I think that's where it is. Uh, and even if it's not, let's just pretend it is. So how does the water get into that pipe there? Well, it's not all gonna flow down through the roads. Typically what we're gonna have is you'll have several locations where catch basins will be located at strategic points on the property, on, in the subdivision. And when I say strategic points, that means areas where water gets collected. Now, each one of these dots that I have drawn on there represents a single catch basin. Those catch basins are typically four feet by four feet wide, so they're square, and the depth of them changes. That's something that gets designed out based on how deep the pipes have to go into the ground. You could have them as shallow as 24 inches. You could have them as deep as more as 20 feet or more into the ground. And they're precast, so we can change that, that height as needed and as we design them. Now, the reason that we design a catch basin on both sides of the road is your roads are symmetric. So if the water is flowing down one curb line on the right side of the road, it's also gonna be flowing down the curb line on the left side of the road as well. So in between each of these catch basins, we're gonna have a series of pipes. I'm gonna change the color for the pipes. Let's make that green. Hopefully that'll stand out. So we have a green pipe, small section that goes across there. And this way, when one pipe fills up, it fills the other part of the basin. So once that's done, then we're gonna have other, I'm getting running out of colors, here we go. We'll probably have a big manhole over here. And we would typically, in a straight line, run the pipe from a catch basin into that manhole. Then we'd have a pipe going from 
catch basin into a manhole. So that water is all flowing down towards the recharge basin. Recharge basins are the lowest point uh, there. So then we would also have water flowing from catch basin to catch basin. And these, we don't have a straight line to it. Like let's, let me show you an example. I can't take a straight pipe and run it through someone's house. Okay, that's not gonna work. We have to go down the road. To do that, to get that pipe to bend, we have to put manholes or junction points in there. So what we're gonna look at is putting additional points where water could be collected. I'm sorry, not necessarily collected, but captured and directed into the catch basin. So we can have water coming in this way, water coming in that way. Uh, let's see, this could connect. And again, this is just an example. So I, I think we're, water could go that way. That looks like a straight shot. That could work. That could definitely do it. And then what we're looking at is that we'd have water traveling down the road, down the road, and we intercept at each of these catch basins. So what you'll notice is as that water flows further and further down into the system, you wind up getting a larger volume of water going into there. So the pipes up here will be small diameter. The pipes over here will be a big diameter with a D as we get into the recharge basin. Okay, so that's generally the way a, a pipe network would work. A pipe network would look uh, going into a, uh, uh, through a subdivision. What you're gonna see if you actually drive around is you're only going to see the grate at the top of the yard, at the top of the, uh, the road. That's the only thing that will be visible to you. Okay, so let's take a look at another subdivision and get an idea of just some other options we have or some other ways you might have these systems set up. And it, it does largely depend on the topography of the site. Water will always run downhill, so we have to take that into account. For this particular site, the recharge basin is located over here. This one happens to be a more rectangular shaped uh, recharge basin. And if you take a look at just the size of that basin compared to the size of the homes and how close they're spaced together, if you could actually sell that property and put homes on there, we could probably build, oh, what is it, six, eight? That's probably about eight homes that could fit on a site like that. So there is a cost of, la of not selling that property for homes and using it as drainage. Uh, that's something you have to just consider in that overall design of the property. But as far as water getting into uh, the, the, the basin, if you look carefully, there's a road, you see the driveway right here, there's a driveway over in that location that's paved all the way down. That's the access into the recharge basin. There's gotta be, that has to be maintained so that when the town goes in to clean them, which they never do because it's maintenance budget, when they go in to clean them, uh, they can easily gain access to that with trucks. That's where the pipes come in through, under that driveway. So you're going to have a series of pipes that, that start there. Let's put in where the typical catch basins would be. Your catch basins would then be probably one here and one there. And then if we don't have catch basins, then you at least have to have a manhole present. So Let's see, where else would you possibly have it? Depending on where the water is flowing, um, you probably have them somewhere like this. Something like that could work. It could be as little as this. And again, I don't have a, I can't drive through this area and, and actually locate where the, the catch basins are, but a system like this would, would be pretty common. And the catch basins are then uh, connected next to each other, and then they would be connected into uh, the recharge basin. But once again, I can't bend the pipe to get through there. I can't go down this road and bend the pipe. So I would need to have a manhole someplace where the pipe can be bent 
or becomes a junction point. So something like that would work. Now I can do a straight run. I'm not going on any private property. And it all gets put into the road below the asphalt. Make that a little bit straighter. One thing you have to be aware of, though, is when you're putting these drainage lines in, if you have sewers in the road for your sanitary sewer, then these pipes become more difficult to, to put uh, to, to place without being crowded. Let's take a look where the water would flow on a site like this. So your water would probably, probably, if this is all your high points, the water would be flowing down the road through all these areas until it's captured by the catch basins. You don't have to put catch basins up at the high points. There's no need to put them up here and then pipe it down. Let gravity work across the surface. Let it run down the road and get captured at, a, at, at places that are closer to the recharge basin. And what that's doing is that recharge basin is now taking all the stormwater runoff from the properties all the way through here. You would have Q is equal to CIA. Q is going to equal a runoff coefficient, usually about 30% for a subdivision times an intensity of somewhere between five and eight. I'll just show eight as an example. Eight inches over 12 inches per foot times the area of that property. I have no idea how big this is, uh, but it could be, let's just say it might be like uh, 500,000 square feet, something really large, maybe a little bit more than that. That would give you a big number, whatever that would be. And that's what this basin's got to hold. Okay, let's take a look at one other example of another subdivision. And this, this is actually a piece of property just to the north. This was the basin we were just looking at before. So with this subdivision, this one's pretty interesting because it's not just a single recharge basin here. This one had uh, such a, a large amount of homes uh, in this particular subdivision and encompassed such a big area that they wound up putting in multiple basins. So one basin we have is located over here. And the other basin is located over there. And it just works out that the way the drains are all set up, the drains are set up where, try and put these in. We have, let's see, we're gonna have some drains that are located there and there on the road. Usually you have them at intersections of um, streets because that's where low points tend to collect. We had some here. I think we also had some here. And we usually see them in, in pairs like that. I think that pretty much, probably one over here too. Okay, so now in terms of piping, Again, water can come into a basin that way. Water can come in, uh, actually comes down the road, connects to these, and then goes in. For this area, uh, there's an access point through here. These connect together, those connect together. There's got to be a manhole someplace over here so that we can get a pipe connecting through that. I realize this might be a little bit confusing trying to see the diagrams for it, but we'll look at some plans and show you a little bit better. Uh, on, on a, a plan sheet, how this all lays out. But the water flow would be as such. Water would come down the road that way and that way. It just flows down the road, just down the curb line. And once it's captured, then it goes into the recharge basin. If you have a high point here, water would flow in that direction. Water could then flow in that direction. Okay, and by doing that, and this water would go probably somewhere like that, that helps define what water goes to which area, and that becomes your storm drainage areas that you're looking at. So again, Q equals CIA. That tell you, tells you the volume of water that goes into the different recharge basins, and then the pipes uh, have to be designed afterwards.